It is the end of an era at Disneyland Paris Resort with the renaming and reimagining of their second, and to be honest, far lesser theme park. The Walt Disney Studios Park While the Paris Resort as a whole has a tumultuous history, Walt Disney Studios Park is particularly notorious as having the reputation of being the worst Disney park in the world. But many things are changing there as it transitions from Walt Disney Studios Park to Disney Adventure World. So in this video, we'll take a tour through the studios seeing how the place appeared before the reimagining. While I must concur that Walt Disney Studios is certainly not the best and can't hold a candle to the Castle Park, I have grown quite fond of the place. I am really looking forward to the future of the property and hope it all turns out great, but there are some things I'll miss. This theme park, which was contractually obligated by the French government to be built, was opened in 2002 10 years after the original park. It was evidently developed on a near shoestring budget as in the past Disneyland Paris had been rather unprofitable, but Disney still needed to build this park by a deadline. This park was originally designed to look like a movie studio backlot, an easy solution for working on a restrictive budget, so at first there was not much to do. There are nods to film history throughout the park which will hopefully stay despite the transition to immersive Disney worlds. I particularly appreciate the Frere Lumiere signpost. An original opening day feature of the studios was the entrance at Studio One, which as of 2024 has closed and is being completely redeveloped. Beyond the Earful Tower and the Mickey Fantasia Fountain, all guests would enter and exit the park through this recreated studio structure. Instead of getting a magnificent scale Hollywood Boulevard replica like the one at Disney MGM Studios in Florida, there was just a little Hollywood Boulevard soundstage set inside the studio. There were shops and a few restaurants behind the crude old Hollywood facades. The interior of Studio One definitely highlighted the limited budget that the park was constructed with, and was really cheesy. But I'll be honest, I kinda liked it. The entrance area used to have a beautiful soundtrack loop of classic movie scores, including the themes from Casablanca. I was very disappointed when they took that out just before I visited for the first time. Now it's a mishmash of Pixar and Marvel music which is representative of the current state of the park. I appreciated the references to historical Hollywood structures like the Crossroads of the World and the Brown Derby Restaurant. However, all the original theming has been torn out. The Studio One structure will still serve as the entryway in the future, but it is being redeveloped into World Premiere, which will supposedly take inspiration from the architecture and decor of historic Hollywood movie theaters. In that case, assuming they don't screw it up, I'm optimistic to see how it turns out and hope it's an improvement overall. One prominent feature inside will be the Hollywood Gardens restaurants. World Premiere is set to open in the spring of 2025. Beyond Studio One, guests enter the front lot in the current center of the park where there was a version of the famous partner statue. The castle in Paris does not have a partner statue, so it's here in the studio's park, but it has been removed. I hope it will return somewhere when construction finishes. They are taking Walt's name out of the place, so they should at least keep this tribute. From here, visitors can go to the left towards Avengers Campus and the Tower of Terror, or to the right for the Toon Studios. Straight ahead, there has basically been nothing for the past 20 years. It just leads to those two-dimensional skyscraper cutouts which are going to be removed. But they are now expanding far beyond that wall with the Adventure Bay and Adventure Way. I think that in French, La Baie d'Aventure et la Voie d'Aventure will sound much better. There may be a little too much adventure going on in the Adventure Park. Back behind this wall, they are building a pathway around a huge bay that will have fountains, as well as an Art Nouveau style pavilion restaurant which I am really excited about. So glad they are doing some non-IP secular attractions and designs here. There is also going to be a spinny ride based on Tangled. It would have been way better if they did a dark ride like Tokyo Disney Sea instead. At the opposite end of the bay will stand the Kingdom of Arendelle with the World of Frozen. 
an entire land based on the film with a frozen dark ride. The other new land that will be added in the future is extremely exciting and will be totally unique to this park. A Lion King land with a Pride Rock Flume Dark Ride is being built on the bay with construction starting soon. Hopefully it will open by the end of the decade, but we'll see. Originally they were going to add a Star Wars land, a scaled down version of Galaxy's Edge in the American parks. Even though that was cancelled a while back, they were still showing the concept art in the park for some reason. Adventure Bay and Arendelle are expected to open in 2026 debuting alongside a new nighttime spectacular fountain projection and drone show in the bay, which hopefully will be awesome. Since there have been less than a handful of attractions, the year 2007 saw some much needed growth in the studio's park with the addition of the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Designed as a near match with the Disney California Adventure version which has since been rethemed, The phenomenal detailed theming throughout the queue makes this the one place in the studios that is on par with the Castle Park. The Drop Tower ride itself is also a blast, and a bit different from its Florida counterpart. Each elevator shaft has a slightly different storyline and show, plus the dropping sequences are longer than the one in Orlando. It's just a creepy and fantastic experience, though I wish they would allow filming on the ride itself. The architecture on the Sunset Boulevard style building surrounding the old Hollywood Tower Hotel is also great. These structures do have a few overlooked vintage storefront setups, and there are a couple of Hollywood star mannequins in that window. It is tacky, but I hope they'll keep them around. Also in 2007, a bit before the Tower of Terror, Toon Studios was opened. This first expansion of the studio is very much continue the backlot theme. For example, Genie is at the Aladdin Magic Carpet ride acting as a film director. The primary feature of the area, Crush's Coaster, is located inside a big studio structure. Crush's Coaster is definitely a lot of fun. There are some dark ride elements to the Nemo based attraction before it spits you out into a Crazy Mouse style coaster in the darkness. The Turtle Shell ride vehicle spins around so assuming it doesn't break down, it is an enjoyable experience after braving the line. Cars Katsuru Rally also opened in 2007. It is a cars based spinning ride that's not that interesting but there are some Route 66 references. There are some little character statuettes at Toon Studios, and even in 2023 there was one of the controversial Br'er Rabbit from Song of the South. Br'er Rabbit got removed pretty soon after I took this clip. A highlight of Walt Disney Studios Park is located in Toon Studios with Mickey et la Magicienne. It is an amazing live stage show with impressive dance numbers and special effects. If it is on during your visit, absolutely make the time to see this magical performance. From Toon Studios, we move into the worlds of Pixar expansion. The first area in 2010 was Toy Story Playland. This area has a few themed kid-based carny rides, and I'll be honest, I think the whole area is a monstrous eyesore that totally ruins the sightlines of the park. Because I do not have anything nice to say about this area, we will move on to something rather agreeable through this toy monkey barrel. Bienvenue à la Place de Rémy, what was in 2014 a totally unique addition to the park. A version has since been built at Epcot. This mock Parisian square just outside the real city is based on the film Ratatouille. It is definitely a romanticized vision of Paris. The fragrances are great, the ambiance is wonderful, and there's a good attraction. The Ratatouille, 
L'Aventure Totalement Toque de Remy Dark Ride is largely 3D screen based, but it is amusing and ends off with the real Chez Remy restaurant where guests can eat French food at a rat size. One of the few opening day attractions was the Studio Tram Tour, which closed in 2020. It was partially replaced in 2021 with the Cars Route 66 Adventure. Now as a Route 66 history aficionado, this attraction sounds great, but frankly it's not. There are some references here and there, but it is a pretty cheap and cheesy overlay. The highlight being the Catastrophe Canyon remaining over from the Studio Tram Tour. Now we are moving on across the park to check out the newest land, the Avengers Campus which opened in 2022. This Marvel themed area is set on the grounds of a former Stark factory in France which is being reused by the Avengers for superheroing purposes. The biggest positive of the campus is how active it is with all the characters. Each visit to the campus can turn out to be a completely different experience. There are regular and random appearances from Marvel superheroes atop the buildings and on the grounds. There are also several little pop-up shows that can happen throughout the day. I caught Spider-Man doing some flips. The Dora Milaje Warriors from Wakanda. Thor and Loki. As well as Star-Lord doing a dance-off. Avengers Campus has two attractions. One of which replaced an opening day ride. The Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith is now Avengers Assemble Flight Force. It is one fast coaster, arguably the most intense at Disneyland Paris. The backstory is that you are being shot into space to help Iron Man and Captain Marvel take out some missiles launched at Earth. The Iron Man animatronic in the pre-show is pretty cool, but the effects on the coaster are rather lackluster. They even added some in while I was living over there. The other ride is Spider-Man Web Slingers, an interactive shooting dark ride where he webs spider bots on screens. It's fun, but definitely not my favorite. The Tom Holland hologram dubbed in a high-pitched French is honestly the best part. In terms of food options here at Avengers Campus, the Stark Kitchen has a full-size Hulkbuster suit, but the main event is the Pym Test Kitchen where you can eat foods resized by Pym Particles. I haven't eaten here before, but it's a cool concept. I do like how they kept this old diner car and renamed it the Super Diner. I did have the privilege of being at the first ever drone show at the Walt Disney Studios Park in 2023. They debuted the Avengers Power of the Night drone show for temporary runs in 2023, and it was absolutely epic. I mean, look at that drone Spider-Man. That's insane. So that was the worst Disney park in the world, which for over two decades now has been contributing to the so-called cultural Chernobyl of France. I hope you enjoy this little tour of how it appeared on the eve of its 22 year existence as Walt Disney Studios Park. I did insert my opinions more than usual so apologies about that. I am optimistic about the future of this park and look forward to visiting in the future as it evolves into more immersive storytelling and, fingers crossed, a higher quality experience, so that maybe it can shake off its unfortunate notoriety as the worst. I will have more detailed videos about this park and Disneyland Paris Resort as a whole coming soon, so make sure to stay in the loop by subscribing to Hoosier Tours, 
I would also appreciate it if you could like this video and share it around. I do have a Patreon as well if you feel so inclined to directly support the production of these videos. Big shout out to the patrons over on Patreon. Additionally, I do have a myriad of travel videos from around Paris, Europe, and America featuring all sorts of theme parks, historic locations, museums, natural wonders, and much more. Thank you for watching.